This demo is going to be pretty simple. Um, you can see I have an IBM Security Verify tenant here. Um, when I come into Security Password Management, um, you can see the intelligence list. I can basically set it up. And you can see that I can enable different um, password and credential checks. So I can enable one from IBM XForce. I can warn the user uh, or I, at, based on user login uh, or based on account creation, I can set different settings uh, because of the uh, friction that's associated with continued users login versus new accounts being created. And I can also update a custom list. So just to show you a quick demo, um, I'm logging in into a Verify tenant. And I'm going to be typing a password. And you can see, secure your account, change your password, your, is on a, your password is entered on a common fish passwords, a list of common fish password, change password. So here I can continue or change password. Um, so you can see some of that experience being defined. Um, this is getting into the risk uh, detection, so I'll get into that in a little bit. But you can see that there is a set of reports associated with password intelligence here, where you can see um, you can see the um, the insights into users using compromised credentials or not using compromised credentials. Um, so you get that level of visibility and auditability as well from a reporting standpoint. Um, okay, so with that, I'm actually going to stop sharing and hand it over to Nagesh to talk about the... I'm going to show like uh, the Scott, basically the admin for the Verify is going to configure the remediation policy. So once that remediation policy has been configured, uh, so there is an attacker who is going to basically simulate the attack on this tenant and the expectation is basically uh, his further request should get blocked based on the remediation policy. So Scott is now trying to log in. So for configuring the remediation policy under security section, we have threat detection. So we can create a policy like so we can put the description. So we have the theme section here where we want to select like particular. So we, we have the uh, detection capability where we are notifying the admin. So we can select a theme that to be selected for email. So currently keeping as default. So this section is basically whom do you want to net notify in case of there is a threat. So we can select a group. So once group is selected, underlying users will get notified. So currently there are three users under this admin group. So that will get notified when there is an attack. So so like uh, like Milan said, like we have the different rules and uh, the different category. Uh, that is being identified uh, so those rules are uh, basically the actionable the actionable ips from the xfe the multiple fail login compromise credential credential stuffing attack and the login deviation so for the critical level so we can set two values so one is basically if you want to notify and if you want to block the topic so usually it is recommended to if it is like critical level severity so it it should be blocked so, but yeah, it is all configurable. A user can select like what they want to configure for a particular rule. So this is enabled for all the rules. Similarly, you can uh, uh, set the value for the warning level as well. For the warning level, it is like recommended to set the email. Uh, obviously it is like a review as per the admin what he want to do. So currently we are setting like uh, enable email like uh, email notification for the warning level category so we have the ip filtering category where we can specify if you want to bypass any ips uh, 
uh, so that list can be specified here if you want to deny or if you want to uh, uh, block certain ips so that list can be added here so this policy is now created and uh, will basically enable it So now we have this uh, the threat limitation policies enabled. So what we are going to do is basically uh, the attacker is basically will use uh, the if you see like he's doing multiple field login, uh, trying to use the compromised credentials and all those stuffs would be happening here. So these are the user. This is the user which is basically the compromise, and this is the IP like forty nine dot thirty nine dot thirty two plus two zero four is the suspicious IP so so once this attack has been happened so we notified using the email so this is the email something which will be received to the admin saying that like there is an there is an attack or uh, basically uh we uh, the detection service has detected this alert so uh it, it gives you like for what rule uh this has uh, this uh, uh, email has been notified and also it will give you like for which ips uh, uh the attack was from which ip this attack was happened so uh if you see uh this is the same ip that we have used for the uh attacking the system so so we can go to the report page so we have the reporting where we can see all those details like what attack what what was the severity for each and every attack let's dive into like uh, the critical multiple fail login that is something we have so and this is the IP we can see for this rule category. And this was the suspicious IP. And even we can download and see like uh, what the user, uh, uh, the event was there for that particular user, a uh, particular alert. So if you see the event, so there is a suspicious IP uh, that was, that got detected and also uh, uh, there is an compromise user the sokomoto so that is something which was uh, uh, there on the uh, the script that we have run for the simulation of attack so next things like uh, when when the further simulation or the basically logging to the uh, this particular tenant uh, by the attacker will will take place in that case expectation is basically it should be get blocked so we'll try to run the same script it is happening from some different system so it's doing trying to do the same stuff but yeah because the remediation policy is enabled uh, now he's not able to do the further attack and also the ip is getting blocked so even he cannot log into the system as well so, so this is the something which attacker is trying to log in from his system and also we are getting like uh, resource cannot be accessed so in that way the remediation policy is coming into effect and your the attacker ip is getting blocked uh, based on the configuration is being done in that remediation panel um so a few things i'm going to show you here and this is actually going to be in the context of a full n10 uh, uh, experience <laughs> so one of the things that one of the many things Verify has in its platform is what we call a flow designer. It's a low code, no code orchestration engine that allows you to define custom business logic uh, for user journeys and identity orchestration. Um, what you're going to be seeing here is a pretty powerful use case. The use case here is <clears throat> we have users that live on prem. We're going to route the user to log into an on prem. Um, uh, username and password that's on prem. Uh, sorry, the username and password that's stored on prem in LDAP. We're gonna prompt that user for that username and password. We're gonna migrate them to a to the Verify's cloud directory, and then as we migrate them, we're gonna check to see if they have pass keys enrolled. We're gonna then enroll them in pass keys, and then we're gonna start doing a risk score check on that user. Okay, so a lot of a lot of things happening. Uh, but the orchestration engine and the orchestration capabilities in Verify make that possible. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as that user. Notice I'm being routed to Active Directory here. 
because the user hasn't been migrated. Notice that I'm logging in with that user. I'll need to perform a one-time password. So I'm going to go get that one-time password. Okay, notice how I'm now being presented to enroll a passkey. So I'm going to add a passkey. I have a MacBook that is enabled for a passkey. And now I have been routed to login. Notice that a risk evaluation of this user is starting to be calculated. And because I've leveraged passkeys and uh, completed a multi-factor in this session, I wasn't prompted for one. So now I've logged it. Okay, so let, let, let's see what happened. Let's see what happened here. Um, so if we come into reports, the first thing we can see is authentication activity. You can see Toronto user 2 logged in. Notice how they logged in with Active Directory as the identity source. Um, this is where they logged in from, um, and so on. You can now see Toronto user 2 created it in the cloud directory. Notice that it was created at 6.04 a.m. Eastern, which is two minutes ago. Uh, and it was modified because it was just migrated, right? And you can see all the information that we're able to propagate from Active Directory. Um, <clears throat> We now go into adaptive access. So notice we're able to start uh, accumulating a risk score of the user. So you get rich details. And if I download the session data and show you, um, you can see the, the vectors that we look at. Is it a new device, the country, the latitude, longitude, the city name, the uh, as organization or the internet service provider, the browser uh, that's being used, the operating system, right? So there's a rich set of details that we're able to do. And based on this, similar to the threat detection uh, capabilities, we're able to apply the machine learning to ensure that uh, we know who the user profile is and the user context is based on historical trends and based on historical ability for that user to successfully complete an MFA, right? And this allows us to establish a risk score uh, of that user. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attempt to log in again with that user. So I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna go log in again but notice how it's starting to detect a passkey for this user. So I can just log in with a passkey. And notice I've, without having to type in a password, I've logged in. And again, the same risk score is being detected. So that's the power of uh, IBM Security Verify across the three vectors that we just saw and how IBM Security Verify can mitigate against those threats, whether it's large-scale identity attacks, whether it's the use of stolen compromised credentials, or whether it's fraudsters trying to impersonate a user uh, as they log in.